happy Friday everybody and welcome to our fabulous Friday free quiz uh, with me Jane Allen and coming up shortly Sean Williamson. Uh, first I'm going to quickly run through the rules with you. I'll keep them short and sweet much like me. Um, number one, uh, the questions. You've got 40 questions. They're in four rounds of 10 questions. You get one point each and there's a lovely picture round as well which hopefully is a lot of fun. Uh, the questions are all in English. We embolden certain bits to help anybody for whom English is not their first language. Please, no cheating. There are no points, there's no prizes, there's no nothing, so please don't cheat. And if you really have to cheat, just don't put your scores in. Um, and finally, um, please don't post the answers anywhere. Um, people will be playing this quiz for as long as we leave it up on YouTube, so please don't post those answers. Okay, and I will be available on uh, Facebook and Twitter after the quiz, so I'd love to chat to you there. Okay, that's enough of me. Let me now introduce you to our fabulous quiz master, Mr. Sean Williamson. Hello, Sean. Well, hello, Jane, and hello, everybody. It's great to be back. How was that last week for you, Jane? Did it go quick, slow? Drag. Oh, it's actually gone really quickly. We're doing so much work writing all these new quizzes and stuff. I don't know how we're finding enough time uh, to actually get them done, but there you go. We are. How about you? Nice Easter? Yeah, <laughs> it was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No partying. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, well, yeah, sort of. Yeah, it's the only way to get through it. Have, have a bit of a party. Have, have, a, have a moderate party every day. Otherwise, um, uh, my, my liver and kidneys will never recover from it. But, uh, yeah, no, we've taken it steady, uh, you know, and uh, it's all good. But it's great to be back. Great to be back for uh, uh, another round of the quiz. It's the third week of the quiz. I know. Third can't can't believe it. I wonder how many more. <laughs> I know. Oh, don't say that. Hopefully not too many. But all the time the situation is going, it's an absolute pleasure to be bringing you, again, the world's largest online quiz. The third week I've been in plays that haven't run for this long. Trust me. So welcome, welcome back everybody, uh, uh, welcome uh, uh, if you're tuning back in, thank you very much for tuning back in, uh, we hope you've been enjoying it over the last fortnight, uh, a special welcome to any new competitors, uh, great to have you on board and anybody join us from anywhere uh, around the world, we hope you're getting on fine in these trying times, I've got the old lockdown beard this week, I'm styling out the old lockdown beard. Uh, it saved me a fortune on razor blades, and who knows, by the end of this, uh, I could get the job as Father Father Christmas. Hey, it's a job. I'm not knocking it. I'll take anything at this stage. Um, yeah, white beard, dark hair, me, dye my hair. Surely not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's get on with the quiz, shall we? Let's, yeah. Okay, it's the same format as the last two weeks. We have uh, four rounds. Uh, uh, so there's 40 points up for grabs. There are three rounds of uh, 10 questions of, of varying subjects of general knowledge. And we have our fun uh, picture round, images round, call it what you want. So far, we've had dodgy waxworks, even dodgier drawings. And this week, we've got something that's very topical. Hmm. What could that be? We're also going to have a, a, a toast uh, at halftime. We traditionally toast uh, the key workers. And we're going to have two toasts tonight. Because, uh, well, any excuse for me, trust me. So we've got two toasts tonight. So make sure you charge charge your glasses. If you haven't already, you can do that in between questions. Okay, look, no more nonsense. Let's get straight in with the quiz. This is round one. Uh, round one will uh, consist of ten questions. And this is the first question. Round one, question one. What is the name of this character from The Muppets? What is the name of this character from The Muppets? Uh, it's probably going to be me in two weeks' time at this he rate. Like down. He's got a chain, look. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of this character from the very popular Muppets? That's question one. <clears throat> question number two. And it's all to do with uh, pastimes. In the card game Pontoon, a single hand consisting of a king and a queen has a total value of how many points? In the card game Pontoon, a single hand consisting of a king and a queen has a total value of how many points? 
Any pontoon players out there? Any card shops? Surely not. Question number three. Jacob's Pharmacy was the first to sell it in 1886. It was priced at five cents a glass and it was originally marketed as a medicine. The creator's bookkeeper named it and wrote the name out in his distinctive script, which is still used to this day. What is it? OK, I'll say that again. Jacob's Pharmacy was the first to sell it in 1886. Originally priced at five cents a glass, it was originally marketed as a medicine. The creator's bookkeeper named it and wrote that name out in his distinctive script. And it's still used to this day. What is it? Any ideas for that one? There's a couple of answers there that spring to mind for me. Good luck. Question number four. The Imperial March is the official name of the recurring piece of music in the Star Wars franchise that is sometimes called Whose Theme? The Imperial March is the official name of the recurring piece of music in the Star Wars franchise that is sometimes called Whose Theme? I wouldn't have a clue. I could have a guess. I didn't really do dragons and robots. I know it's popular and I know I'm the one that's missing out. It's a massive gap in my knowledge. The Imperial March. Star Wars. Who's theme? Question number five. The Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps are both landmarks that can be found in which European capital city? The Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps are both landmarks that can be found in which European capital city? It's traditional to toss coins into the Trevi Fountain. And legend has it that if you do that, you'll be poorer. OK, Trevi Fountain, Spanish Steps, landmarks in which European capital city? Maybe you've been there. Maybe you just know because you're clever. Question six. Which company's logo features this hidden arrow? Which company's logo features this hidden arrow? I've never noticed this. Must have looked at this logo at least four times. You'll never be able to look at it without seeing this again now. Every time I look at this logo now, I'll yeah. see that hidden arrow. Question number seven. The name of which stringed instrument comes from the Hawaiian for jumping flea? The name of which stringed instrument comes from the Hawaiian for jumping flea? What a nice question that is. Stringed instrument, Hawaiian, jumping flea. Any clues there for you? If not, write down anything. There's the one golden rule in quizzing, okay? Never leave a blank space. So if you're not sure, write anything down. Anything. Golden rule. Might be right. Question eight. Who was the president of the USA on the 1st of January 2000? As we went into a new millennium, who was the president of the USA on the 1st of January 2000? Okay, question number nine. We're hoping you're enjoying the, the uh, how varied these questions are. We try and uh, cater them to suit everybody. Bit of politics there, bit of politics. Question number nine of round one. Ned Flanders is the fervently religious next door neighbor of which famous TV family? Ned Flanders, the fervently religious neighbor of which famous TV family? How many of you watch that show? And round one, question number 10. Buñol in Spain is the scene of the world's biggest food fight with revelers throwing around 125 tons of which fruit at one another? 
Buñol in Spain is the scene of the world's biggest food fight, with revelers throwing around 125 tons of which fruit at one another. So it reminds me of whenever I take a curtain call in the theatre, that question. <laughs> Buñol in Spain. Have a guess if you don't know it. Fruit. 125 tons. Okay, already that's the end of round number one. We'll give you a little recap there. Okay, uh, what was the name of the, that character from the Muppets that we showed you an image of? What do you think his name is in the Muppets? The card game, Pontoon, number two. King and a Queen. Total of how many points according to the rules of that game? How many points is a King and a Queen worth in Pontoon? Number three. Jacob's Pharmacy painted it in 1886, sold it five cents a glass, and it was marketed as a medicine. Uh, the creator's bookkeeper named it, and he wrote out uh, wrote it out in his distinctive script. They've kept that script to this day. What's the name of the product? Number four, the Imperial March uh, features in Star Wars. It's also known as Who's Themed. Whose theme is the Imperial March in Star Wars? Number five, the Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps can be found in which European capital city? Number six, which country's logo captures this hidden arrow? Which country's logo features this hidden arrow hidden within the logo? Which company? Very famous. Number seven, the name of which stringed in uh, <laughs> instrument comes from the Hawaiian for jumping flea. The name of which stringed instrument comes from the Hawaiian for jumping flea. Number eight, who was the president of the USA in the 1st of January 2000? Who was the president of the USA on the 1st of January 2000? Number nine, Ned Flanders, the fervently religious neighbor of which TV family? And number 10, Buñol in Spain is the scene of the world's biggest food fight. The revelers throw 125 tonne of which fruit at one another? Okay, uh, we hope that wasn't too uh, too grim for you. Here are the answers. As I say, write down anything quickly. Time's up. Good luck. Round one, question number one. We asked you what was the name of this character from the Muppets. It was Animal. He's an animal. And he's the drummer in the band. Do you know the name of the band? Now, you'll be doing well if you know that. I'm not going to say what it is because we could use that in another week. <clears throat> Just give yourself a pat on the back if you know the name okay. of the band. I'll make, a note. I'll make a note. <laughs> Number two, uh, a king and a queen uh, of uh, any suit in pontoon. They're worth 20. The face cards are worth 10 each. So the answer was 20. Simple as that, really. Number three, long question, short answer. Coca-Cola. If you imagine it, uh, seeing it now on, on the side of the tin or bottle, uh, that lovely script that's been there from the world go. Number four, uh, the Darth Vader's March from um, uh, Star Wars. I wouldn't have known that, but I did know that Dave Prowse, the old uh, uh, Green Cross Code man, was inside the suit from the world go. The Trevi uh, uh, Fountain and the Spanish Steps can be found in Rome. I think there are 136 Spanish Steps, I think. Don't quote me on that. Okie dokie. And uh, question number, is that six? Yeah, question number six. Question number six. Uh, FedEx, Federal Express, and there it is. We've got an arrow pointing to the to the hidden um, arrow there. Never spotted that, and now you will never be able to look at that again, be honest, without noticing that arrow. So good luck never. if you said that. I wouldn't have had, wouldn't have had a clue. Never unsee that now. You will never be able to unsee that. Number seven is the ukulele. The ukulele, uh, uh, Hawaiian for jumping flea, popularly uh, 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 used in this country by George Formby. Remember George Formby, if you're of a certain age? In fact, the other week, I accidentally bought a George Formby grill uh, instead of a George Foreman grill. And today, uh, for the second day on the trot, I, 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 I uh, cooked steak on it, and it turned out nice again. That joke <laughs> will mean nothing to you if you're under 50. Moving on. Number eight, who was the president at, at the turn of the, uh, of the millennium? Uh, it was William Bill Clinton. His surname, his proper surname is Jefferson, actually. 
and he was the 42nd president of the USA. But that's the answer you wanted. Clinton, Clinton, do you? 1st of January 2000. Number nine, Ned Flanders uh, is the uh, fervently religious next door neighbor of The Simpsons. I'm sure a lot of you knew that. Incredibly popular TV show. Flanders is named after Flanders Street in Portland, Oregon, where the originator of uh, Simpsons comes from. And uh, number 10, tomatoes in Bunyol in Spain. They had the world's biggest food fight and they throw tomatoes at each other and it resembles any curtain call I ever make in the theatre. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, how did you get on with that round? We hope that you did well. So uh, there's an incredible man uh, doing some incredible things at the moment, as we know. His name's Captain Tom Moore. He's raised millions, millions for charity by walking around his back garden at the age of 99. Sir, we salute you. Your country salutes you. Uh, here's the first toast of the evening. Thank you for giving me the excuse to have uh, my first beer of the night as well. You're doing great things. You really are. Bravo. You only set out to make a thousand pounds. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Captain Tom Moore only set out to make a thousand pounds. How about that? Yeah. Incredible. incredible. And he's made millions and millions and millions. Absolutely great stuff. Now, I think we've got a new, uh, we've got a new um, slant. Uh, to start the next round, we're, we're going to keep uh, keep things fun uh, and keep putting new things into the quiz, aren't we, Jane? We absolutely certainly are. Well, actually, you have this time. This is this is entirely your doing. <laughs> so it's a little idea I had each week. We're going to insert something called uh, Sean's teaser. Sean's teaser, and all this is there's no points up for grabs. Just a very big pat on the back, uh, a cyber pat on the back from me if you get it right. Uh, Hopefully, it's going to be difficult enough to keep you guessing throughout the round, uh, or you might get it immediately. And if you do, you're clever, clogs, aren't you? Far too clever. But uh, so here is the very first Sean's teaser. I'll give you the answer at the end of the round. It's not worth anything apart from, as I say, kudos. What went up in 1961 and came down in 1989? What went up in 1961 and came down in 1989? Have a ponder about that all the way through the round. Um, and good luck as we start round two proper. So question one of round two. This picture was taken uh, from space. It shows which World Heritage Site? This picture was taken from space. It shows which World Heritage Site? Good luck with that. I'm sure we can have a guess at that if you don't know. <coughs> A little bit of geography for you there. Now we're going to move into a bit of natural history for round two. Question two. Which dinosaur has a name that means three-horned face? Which dinosaur has a name that means three-horned face? Or should I say had? Because if he's still around, I'm nervous. <laughs> and of course the bones are still around, so they're still with us. <clears throat> In spirit. Which dinosaur has a name that means three-horned face? Question number three. What is the two-word name of the coffee bar where the characters in Friends meet? What is the two-word name of the coffee bar where the characters in Friends meet? Just quickly, just very quickly, uh, have a guess how many episodes of Friends were made. I'll give you to within ten. There's no points available. Got a guess? 236. I was going to say 120 miles out. Jane thought how many, Jane? 120. Jane thought 120. I, I wouldn't have said as many as 236, I must be honest. No, it's huge. Big fan of Friends, Jane? Yeah, love it, love it. They're rerunning it at the moment on Channel 5. You know what? The other night I watched... Uh, the first one's one to four. Um, and I think I'm going to get through to 236. <laughs> well, if this lockdown keeps going on, <laughs> we might all do. Uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Not much longer. Round two, question four. Which wireless internet technology is named after a Scandinavian king? Which wireless Internet technology is named after a Scandinavian king. 
he looks quite cheerful there, doesn't he? I bet he wasn't in real life. I bet he wasn't that nice. I bet he was a handful. I found some other pictures of him looking proper Viking. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah let's, let's, keep, let's keep the friendly one in. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's nice. That's nice. They probably get, you know, those uh, Scandinavians, those marauding, pillaging Scandinavians. They get a very bad press. Pretty very nice people. Round two, question five. What type of creature is a blue-footed booby? What type of creature? Basically, just what type of creature is a blue-footed booby? You can be as exact as you want, but we're basically after a, a, a sort of... It's a sort of general answer. You don't have to be too exact. What type of creature is a blue-footed booby? What a nice name. I'd like to be called a blue-footed booby. <laughs> it's pleasant. A little bit of uh, nature for you. A little bit of nature. Round two, question six. Cuisine. We like to spread things around here. It's cuisine. Question about cuisine. If you've got a mouthful of rumbledy thumps... A mouthful of rumbledy thumps, you'd be eating which root vegetable with cabbage and onions? If you've got a mouthful of rumbledy thumps, you'd be eating which root vegetable with cabbage and onions? Rumbledy thumps sounds like a character out of Harry Potter. Rumbledy thumps, cabbage, onions, and which root vegetable? Question number seven it's on astronomy. Which is the only planet in our solar system that is not named after a Greek or Roman god? Which is the only planet in our solar system that is not named after a Greek or Roman god? There's a mnemonic, isn't there? Do you know? Do you have your own mnemonic, Jane, to remember this? Uh, yes, yeah, I know. The the this, is, this is to remember the planets in order from the sun going outwards. What, what's your mnemonic? Well, I, I remember it differently to other people, I think. I've heard the mnemonics, but I, I know the first four and the furthest away ones spell the word sun. That's how I remember them. Saturn, ah. Uranus, Neptune, the furthest from the sun spell sun. Very good. Mine is my very educated mother just served us nachos. <laughs> very good. You like that? Very good. Yep. She doesn't serve me nachos, she's just roasts, soups. That's the way that I, I remember it anyway. Okay, round two, question eight. Which movie character am I? I was born in the USA on the 1st of July, 1899, with the first names Henry Walton. But you'll know me best by my nickname, taken from my childhood pet dog. I have a fear of snakes, and I have been a university professor. Say it once, just quickly. Which movie character am I? I just want the name of the movie character, not the actor. I was born in the USA on the 1st of July, 1899, with the first names Henry Walton. But you'll know me best by my nickname, taken from my childhood pet dog. I have a fear of snakes, and I have been a university professor. Very well-known movie character. sure you're at least aware of the films even if you haven't seen them good luck round two question nine now this is uh, this is quite tricky this one this is for all you internet the frequent internet users or uh, keypad users commonly used on the internet which symbol is technically technically called i can't even say it an octothorpe I'll say that again for my own benefit, if not yours. Commonly used on the internet, which symbol is technically called an octothorpe? Again, good luck with that. I wouldn't have had a clue. Commonly used on the internet, which symbol is technically called an octothorpe? You know, the great thing about quizzes is you always learn something new, and I've just learned I can't say the word technically. At least I can probably say it one time out of five. You're always learning something, aren't you? I think people who are homeschooling their kids could just bring them to watch these quizzes. Job done. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> An octothorpe. 
clues, I don't know, I, I would say the clue isn't even in the question. I think that's quite tough. Anyway, we've got to put a few tough ones in, obviously. Good luck with that one. Hopefully you know what an octothorpe is technically, is otherwise known as, is commonly known as. That's the technical name. And to finish off round two, we have question 10. In which Florida resort was President Richard Nixon when he gave his famous I am not a crook speech? In which Florida resort was President Richard Nixon when he gave his famous I am not a crook speech? And there he is, bless him. Arms aloft. The world's his oyster. And we all know what happened next. Well, again, if you do, if you're over 50. <laughs> Sure, we can guess though. Uh, very, very famous uh, speech and a very famous resort. But which one was it? That's what we need to know. Which Florida resort was President Richard Nixon when he gave his famous I'm not a crook speech? That's it. We just have a very quick uh, uh, summary of the questions again. Uh, number one, this picture taken from space shows which World Heritage Site. Number two, which dinosaur has a name that means three horned face? Number three, what is the two-word name of the coffee bar where the characters in Friends meet? Number four, wireless internet technology. What, which one is named after a Scandinavian king? Number five, what type of creature is a blue-footed booby? Number six, if you've got a mouthful of rumbledy thumps, you're eating which root vegetable with cabbage and onions? Number seven, which is the only planet in the solar system not named after a Greek or Roman god? Number eight, which movie character am I? Born 1st of July, 1899. First name's Henry Walton. Best known by my nickname, taken from my pet dog, Fear of Snakes, University Professor. Number nine, often used on the internet, which symbol is technically called an octopus? And number ten, in which Florida resort was President Richard Nixon when he gave his famous I am not a crook speech? Well, let's see how we get on with those ones. Uh, again, I think that's a nice mixture of, you know, easy, difficult and middling. Let us know. Give us some feedback. Uh, we're always looking for feedback, aren't we, Jane? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I w watch scores as well. So when you finish the quiz, if you pop your scores in, that's a really helpful indicator for us of whether I'm doing a good job with the questions or not. <laughs> yeah, good point. Because, you know, we don't want people getting six out of 40 or... Every no, team getting 40 or 39. It doesn't work either way, really. So, yeah, either Absolutely. way. Give no, us some it's feedback. Tough job. tough job getting the questions levels right. <laughs> it is. It is. When you when you set a quiz, you, you never really want the last team to be more than 20 points away from the winning team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. No, you want everybody to everybody to feel like they had a good game. That's, that's yeah. what you're looking for. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, well, here are the answers uh, to round number two. So you end of round number two already. Time goes fast when you're having fun. Okay, we asked you, this picture uh, uh, from Space shows which World Heritage Site. It was Australia's Great Barrier Reef, found uh, off Queensland uh, by the Coral Sea. That The name of the uh, uh, dinosaur with a three-horned face was the Triceratops. It is the official state dinosaur of Wyoming. Yes, about 13 states of America have an official state dinosaur. It was someone's job to allocate that. Must have been a quiet day in the office. You know. That's a brilliant fact, though. Brilliant fact. Let's have an official state dinosaur, really. Anyway. Triceratops. Number three, Central Perk. Central Perk, obviously a play on words, or Central Park, is where the friends meet for their coffee. Uh, Gunther, uh, the barman, uh, has been in 148 of the 236 episodes. He is the next most appeared actor in it, apart from uh, the eponymous friends. Number four, uh, the wireless technology was named after Bluetooth. His name was Harold, Harold Bluetooth. Uh, apparently he had bad teeth that were black, and some people interpreted this as blue. That's one of the legends anyway, but it was Harold Bluetooth, King of Norway, and various other parts of Scandinavia. Well done if you said Bluetooth. The answer to question number five. It's a bird, basically a, 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 a blue-footed booby. It's basically it's a marine bird, but bird is all we were looking for. It's named after the Spanish bobo, which means clown because it looks clumsy on land, like a lot of seabirds do. They're just getting their land legs when they uh, when they're wandering around. We've been in the sea most of the time, so it's a marine bird, a booby. 
Number six was our cuisine question for the round. If you've got a mouthful of rumbledy thumps, you've got a mouthful of cabbage, onions and potato, mashed potato, traditionally, but potato will accept. And it's a traditional uh, dish from the Scottish borders. Well done if you said potato. Number seven, Earth is the only planet that isn't named after a Greek or Roman god. You run through the others in your head, Mars, Venus, Mercury, so on, so on. They're all named after uh, Greek Roman gods. Uh, it was Indiana Jones, bless him. Indiana Jones uh, was the uh, uh, film character that we're looking for. We did say the name of the character, so unfortunately you can't have Harrison Ford. Uh, they filmed those uh, films, a, a lot of the scenes at Boreham Wood up in Hertfordshire where they filmed Big Brother. And apparently uh, during the making of them, some of the snakes escaped and they formed little colonies way deep below the film studio. Anyway, I don't want to find out if that's true or not. Number nine. Commonly used on the internet, which symbol is technically called an octothorpe? You can have any of these answers. It's a hash, which is the official name of a hashtag. We can have a gate or a number sign. Now, if any of our uh, friends in America wrote the pound symbol, you're allowed that. We will let you have that if you're American. Because not only are you our great friends, that is a, a symbol that is called that in, in America. An, an, an octothorp can also be the pound symbol. So hash, hashtag, gate, number sign, and if you are an American, a pound symbol. Well done if you said that. And number 10, in which Florida resort was President Richard Nixon when he gave his I am not a crook speech? The picture's taken outside the Contemporary Hotel in Walt Disney World. It's a great fact, isn't it, that? <laughs> it is a great fact, and what a place to declare it as well. Tricky dicky. Richard Nixon. Uh, a picture of him there outside the Contemporary Hotel in Walt Disney World. OK, uh, congratulations if you did well on that round. Uh, and the first round, hopefully you're picking up sevens and eights uh, all the way through these rounds. That's sort of what we're looking for. Uh, and yet, yeah, good luck. And now it's the time to reveal, hopefully, the one that kept you going all the way through that round, scratching your heads. Uh, uh, shrugging your shoulders at each other in a non-committal way. It's short, the answer to Sean's teaser, ladies and gentlemen. What went up in 1961 and came down in 1989? The Berlin Wall. Mm. Hey, it was the Berlin Wall. <clears throat> I thought it a soap opera character went up to bed, came down 20 odd years later as a different actor. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's happened a few times. I know. <laughs> Nick Tilsley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could be the soap, this yeah, the, the soap <laughs> character. Very good, very good. Okay, well, I hope you're uh, enjoying the quiz. We've got our fun round coming up next, but uh, before that, uh, we do uh, at this point traditionally raise a toast to our key workers. Um, uh, you know who you are, the NHS. Yeah, the NHS. Uh, I, I can't name you all because there's so many different strands. Uh, obviously, the armed forces, the police, everybody who's keeping our food chain going, uh, from delivery drivers to factory workers to shop workers. Uh, you know, a taxi drivers. There are so many of you. You know who you are. Maybe you've been out and done your shift, and uh, you're coming back and uh, and enjoying the quiz uh, with your feet up and a glass in your hand. If that's you, uh, special welcome to you, and thank you very much for keeping the company, uh, the country going in these times. Here's to you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Now it's time for our. Uh, we call it a picture round or an images round. Uh, the last two weeks we've had dodgy uh, waxworks and very even dodgier drawings of famous people. <clears throat> now, recently, uh, the lovely Claudia Winkleman, uh, co-host of Strictly Come Dancing, was in the Daily Mail. And she was saying that uh, she famously got the fringe, uh, her hair fringe, you know, the famous fringe that Claudia's got. And she was saying that lockdown is, is playing uh, havoc with her hair in general. <clears throat> and uh, these days, uh, she said, hair-wise, she, she, she more resembles meatloaf than Claudia Winkleman. Claudia Winkleman. So they ran uh, an article in the Daily Mail that showed an image of Claudia Winkleman next door to an image of meatloaf. But it wasn't meatloaf. It was a picture of me winning stars in their eyes way back in something like 2004. They used this picture. It's not the first time this has been done. Uh, the, uh, the Evening Standard ran a story back in the 2000s um, and used my picture uh, instead of uh, the great meatloaf himself. So Sharon Knight, 
uh, a friend of the show, uh, uh, gave us a, a, a great idea and, and come up with this idea herself. That we could impose my face, my face or facial features onto an image of a celebrity. Okay, and that's what we've done for round three. You're going to see the uh, ten celebrities, but they've all got my face. This round is called That's Not Sean Williamson. Catchy? We think so. So uh, what's coming up? Ten images of famous people, but uh, don't be thrown by the face because the face every time is me. Got it? I'll explain again at the end. Okay, here's... <laughs> I've only just seen these for the first time. That's brilliant. Okay, uh, number one there. <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. There's an image of me. Number two. I'm bossing that look, aren't I? In fact, it's locked now. I'm, I'm just going to get that haircut anyway, I think. <laughs> you can't see where you end and, and they stop. I know. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> He's suddenly become a very good-looking chap, isn't he? <laughs> Number three, I think this this look could uh, could really take off. Could really take off. I think so. Excuse me. Look at that. That that could launch a uh, uh, a million hairdos. That look. <laughs> the days of me growing hair that long are long gone. But which celebrity uh, is behind number three? Number four, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. I have an anecdote about him and me, actually, which I can't give you until the answers, obviously, but I have a little anecdote about me and that gentleman. And number five, <laughs> oh, yeah, I could certainly, uh, I reckon I know two, three, and four. I could have a guess at one. I wouldn't have a clue what number five was. Well done if you get number five. Um, <clears throat> haven't got a Scooby very funny though and a great idea Sharon Knight thank you and well done to everybody who, who put all these images together um, <laughs> it's good fun so how are you getting on with those five we've got another five four you would give you a little bit longer on that one we'll come back to it as well as I say uh, if it isn't your cultural department some of these ones just put any name in <laughs> okay this is six through to 10. Number six, uh, there's uh, me as a famous Disney uh, character. Number seven, that's clever. I wonder if you'll know that. And that is probably the hardest one of the round for a lot of you, I reckon. Yeah, that's just clever. Number eight, though. <laughs> number eight was, uh, was me. Uh, that was taken, oh, three weeks ago before lockdown. <laughs> When I, when I was still managing to get to the gym regularly. Um, and of course, it's all gone now. Look, you know, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long to lose it. It takes ages to look like that and three weeks to look like this. One of the tragedies of life, really. So who's that behind my face? Number eight. Number nine. <laughs> That's funny. Number nine's clever. <laughs> and who's that hiding behind my face on number 10 brilliant love it love it love it okay so we'll, we'll show you them all again just uh we'll leave them up for slightly less time <laughs> i think number two should be profile picture from now on <laughs> Well, I've, I've got a weird, I've got a weird, um, yeah, liking of number two. <laughs> but, but wearing the outfit of number one. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think that's my inner me, really, an, an amalgam of, of number one and, and number two. Just because you want all of those awards that number one's got. <laughs> yeah. So that's one to five. As I say, don't don't leave a gap. Just just put in a fun answer if you don't know. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> and there is six to ten again. In fact, number ten, I had hair like that in the uh, in the very early eighties, which is why my hair now looks like this. Don't mess about with your hair too much, kids, <laughs> <laughs> because this is what happens. I fancy myself as a bit of a, <clears throat> a dynamic cross between 
Spandau Ballion Toya. <laughs> and there's number eight, me at the gym. Number nine, me on a Saturday night. <laughs> when I call myself Rosalind. And number ten. Well, what can I say? I think that's enough time, really, because you know it or you don't, and the others you can have a guess at. It's as simple as that, really. But again, many thanks to uh, everyone who sorted out those uh, images, graphics. Thank you to Sharon Knight for a brilliant idea. Okay, great stuff. Let's look at the answers, shall we? Right. Number one. It is, of course... Who else has that fashion sense at the moment? And as you said, Jane, a raft of awards to her name. Billie Eilish and the singer of the uh, the latest James Bond film when it finally comes out. One of the most delayed movie premiere in history. Billie Eilish, singer of the current uh, theme to the new James Bond film. Now, I wonder who number two could be. <laughs> it's, it's that wacky funster Kim Jong-un. <laughs> <laughs> watch this space that that could be what I'm saying is next Friday watch this space <laughs> number three you'll normally find her in Central Perk this isn't just thrown together this quiz you'll normally find her in Central Perk there you go for that answer from the last round from friends Jennifer Aniston but we're going to give you Rachel Green on that one we're going to be very generous and give you Rachel Green Jennifer Aniston, Rachel Green. It was known as the Rachel, the haircut, so it's only fair to give you Rachel Green as well. But even she couldn't do it justice that, the justice that I've done. Let's be honest. That's my haircut. Okay, number four. Again, I wonder who on earth this could be. It looks like it is, of course, Donald Trump. It looks like me. Now, again, forgive me if you're under 50. But it looks like me, a cross between me and a flock of seagulls. <laughs> I think it looks a bit Blake Carrington as well. From a little, little bit of Blake Carrington in there as well, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you know what? I'm not going to give this anecdote away because I think we can work it into we, we can work it into the quiz. I'm not going to give the anecdote away. Okay, that, that's that's for another week. Okay. What's the answer to uh, number five? I wouldn't have had a clue with this one, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Margot Robbie playing Harley Quinn. I've been reliably informed. Is it, Jane, is it Suicide Squad? Suicide Squad, yeah. Suicide Squad films. I've never had the... Uh, having said, I'll, I'll be I'll be well up on them in three weeks. Well up on them. Well up on everything, really. Yeah, people playing with teenagers and kids, they'll, they'll have nailed that one. But again, does she look as good as I do? Margot Robbie, Holly Quinn. Well done if you got that, particularly if you are uh, of my vintage. Okay, question number six. The answer was... If you didn't know the answer to this, just let it go. Let it go. Uh, it's Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> There's something very wrong about that, isn't there? <laughs> On every level. Well done if you said that. Now, number seven, probably the hardest one of the round. Uh, Frida Kahlo, uh, the, the artist. Was it she who did the murals or was it her old man? Who did the murals? Um, I think that that might have been him, Diego. Diego Rivera, she was married yeah. to. The famous muralist. Yeah. But anyway, well done if you got that. Very tough. I don't know, it looks a cross between but I, that hair could have been Amy Winehouse, could it? The hair. I'm not saying anything else, but to know. <laughs> Number eight. Yes. Oh, just Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Suddenly looking very handsome, I have to say. Yeah, that's giving giving him a whole new dimension. He'll have that as his profile picture. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> he wouldn't go far wrong if he did, I don't think. <laughs> I'll send it to 
start selling a few records again. <laughs> Number nine, who's this cheeky, cheeky, cheeky chappy? It's not a cheeky chappy, it's a cheeky chappess. It's Annie from the famous uh, film uh, Stories. Uh, or we'll accept Eileen Quinn, obviously the actress. Uh, that's a very endearing uh, uh, image. Annie, Eileen Quinn. In the famous film, I think Albert Finney played Daddy Warbucks. And number ten. Now, th th this could have gone either way. Uh, I thought it. I thought it was Annie Lennox. <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, but it's a very iconic look for a very iconic uh, record cover, and it is Grace Jones. You have my deepest sympathy if you said Annie Lennox. It's Grace Jones, so that wasn't easy. So how did you get on with those? We hope you had some fun anyway, at least, even if you only scored uh, if you scored uh, quite low. I think out of the last three picture rounds we've done, I think I think that was the probably the easiest. Maybe it's, it's certainly easier than last week, I would say. But it's again, fun putting it together. <laughs> oh, great, great fun! And again, again, thank you, uh, Sharon. Brilliant idea. And thank you to uh, Jules and everyone backstage for putting all that uh, together for us. Great fun. So, how did you get on? I hope you scored well. Don't forget, um, you can uh, you can pit your wits uh, against some of the greatest quizzes in the world. We know some of them are, are, are tuned in tonight. Um, so, obviously, feed your answers in at the end. We'll remind you of all this, this, this at the end, see how you did against them. But you can also take part in our regular uh, uh, the, the Grand Prix events, which happen on the first... Saturday of every month. I will pass over to Jane now because I don't want to get the date wrong. So the next UK Grand Prix is on May the 4th. Saturday, May the 4th, be with you. So definitely come and join us for that. Um, we have lots of people playing it from the UK and abroad. You haven't got to be British to play, um, but the questions do have a slight UK lilt to them. Um, we're also playing um, on Saturday tomorrow um, the, an American version of the same quiz, which, again, you're very welcome to join us for. If you go to uh, quest.quizzing.com, you'll find uh, where to register and the uh, how to get hold of questions for that. But 240 questions, pretty challenging quizzes, though, these ones. Um, they are typically played by league quizzers, you know, people who are really, really into it, like Sean here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do go to them, and, and as I've said in previous weeks, uh, if, if you are just uh, joining us for the first time this week, um, it, it, it's on, on, honestly like you take up football and you think, I'll just kick a ball around the park, and suddenly you're standing next to Lionel Messi, because you could be at the same table with people like Kevin Ashman, Pat Gibson, uh, uh, you know, Anne Hegarty, and uh, not, not just famous quizzes, there are some brilliant quizzes you've never heard of. So, you know, uh, have a go. As soon as lockdown's over, come and join us live, or, or as I say, this May... Play, play online and pit your wits against the best in, in the country. Uh, you know, what have you got to lose? Just uh, just, just uh, see how you get on. Absolutely. Come and have a go. Come and have a go. It's, honestly, it's great fun. It's great fun. See how you do against Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you'll be all right against me. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> I think the highest I've come is 59th. That's not I mean, bad. No, it's all right. It's all right out of 150 or 200. Yeah. So, right, you know, uh, so there you go. But... Uh, but anyway, yeah, give it a go um, and see how you fare. Right, we hope you've enjoyed tonight so far. Uh, it's already time for round four. So this will be uh, the final round of the evening. Again, it's a mixed bag, 10 general knowledge questions. Uh, let's see how you get on. Good luck. Okay, you're now going to see a, a clip of a, a music video. And this features... Uh, a guy called Weird Al Yankovic. Look him up. He is absolutely brilliant. But he is par parodying a song by... OK. We'd like to know which artist Weird Al Yankovic is parodying in that song. Look him up. He parodies a lot of very famous uh, uh, singers in various styles. He's a genius. Uh, okay, so we, we need the name of the singer that he's taking off. Good luck with that. Round four, question number two. 
1947, a famous advertising campaign for De Beers said, a diamond is what? In 1947, a campaign, a famous advertising campaign for De Beers said, a diamond is what? I can think of a couple of answers for that one. I'm sure you can. Let's hope you pick the right one. De Beers, 1947, famous advertising campaign. A diamond is what? Good luck. Round four, question number three. The proboscis monkey. Sorry, that's just gone through loads. Sorry. That's right. Round four, question number three. The proboscis monkey has an unusually large reddish brown what? Now, now, I think we've been very good tonight. We've restrained ourselves. We don't you uh, put anything dirty down. The proboscis monkey has an unusually large reddish brown what? We have a nature question there for you. Now, round four, question number four. Ron Wayne sold his 10% stake in which company for $800 in 1976? I can't give you any clues. All I'm going to say is <laughs> it will be worth substantially more today. Ron Wayne sold his 10% stake in which company for $800 in 1976? If you don't know, incredibly famous company, just, uh, just pick one. Round four, question number five. Originally only available in white, which popular modelling material was originally invented to clean coal residue from wallpaper? <clears throat> I'll say that again. Originally only available in white, which popular modelling material was originally invented to clean coal residue from wallpaper. Yeah, I can see that. That's clever. Yeah. I get it. Wouldn't have got it right, but I can picture them doing it with it. Popular modelling material invented to clean coal dust residue from wallpaper. Can't say the questions aren't varied. Round four, question number six. Legend has it that the Egyptian pharaoh, King Pepi II, commonly smothered his servants in what to keep flies away from him? Yeah, there's a few options there as well. I'm hoping it's uh, not something that I'm thinking of. <laughs> 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 Legend has it that the Egyptian pharaoh King Pepi II smothered his servants in what to keep flies away from him. What a gentleman. We have ancient history there. And number seven, staying on a sort of historical historical theme, there was food and drink. The legendary Benedictine monk who invented champagne was called Dom what? The legendary Benedictine monk who invented champagne was called Dom what? One of those things, I don't know about you, there are certain things that you can't wait to try, you know, when you become an adult, isn't there? And two of the things I'm sure in most people, champagne and oysters. And I don't know about you, but weren't we, we they let down the first time you had one? It depends what champagne. I mean, most of us have our first sip of champagne at you know, a family wedding, don't we, when we're about 16. And it's normally as cheap as chips. So that's the first letdown in your life. Just how bad champagne can be. But oysters. I had my first one in New Orleans, 1987. I won't use the word, but it was like chewing on... Something that comes out of your nose when you've got a cold. <laughs> and people had said, oh, no, don't put anything on it. You best just 
Swallow it whole. No. If you've never had an oyster, if you're young, you never had an oyster, smother it, right, in anything you can get your hands on. Tabasco, pepper, smother it. It tastes of nothing. Wallpaper paste. <laughs> That's my little rant out of the way, so I've never never got over it. And a pretzel. Do you know what I mean? I know people... I thought this pretzel is a magical thing. It's just a bit, a bit dried bread. Anyway, rant over. Number eight. Where will you find the sea of tranquility? Where will you find the sea of tranquility? Straightforward. You've heard of it or you haven't. If you haven't, have a guess. Where will you find the sea of of tranquility. Very straightforward. Round four, question nine for our, our nature lovers. Saffron comes from which flower? Saffron comes from which flower? And if you've got lots of it, you're doing very well. We'll come on to that later. Why? Saffron. Which flower does saffron come from? And number 10. Which singer's Shape of You is the most streamed track ever on Spotify? Okay, you won't believe the amount of times this has been streamed. I'll, I'll do another little mini quiz uh, when, when we're coming up to the to the answers. You won't believe how many time, times this has been streamed. Which singer's Shape of You is the most streamed track ever on Spotify. That was round four. Good luck. We're going to recap the questions very quickly. Number one, Weird Al Yankovic parod parodied which singer in the video that we showed you? We don't want the name of the song. Which singer was he parodying? That's not easy to say either. Number two, in 1947, a famous advertising campaign for De Beers said a diamond is what? Number three, the proboscis monkey has an unusually large reddish-brown what? <laughs> Matron. Number four, Ron Wayne uh, sold his 10% stake in which company for $800 in 1976? Number five, originally only available in white, which popular modelling material was originally invented to clean coal residue from wallpaper? Number six, legend has it that the uh, Egyptian pharaoh king Pepi II Commonly smothered his servants in what to keep the flies away from him? <laughs> Number seven, the legendary Benedictine monk who invented champagne was called Dom Watt, D-O-M. Number eight, where will you find the Sea of Tranquility? Number nine, saffron comes from which flower? And number ten, which singer's Shape of You is the most streamed track ever on Spotify? If you've got a gap on your answer sheet, write down anything. Give you a couple of seconds there. Okay. Have you written something down? Go on. Well done. Okay. Here are the answers. Good luck. The answer to question number one. It was Michael Jackson. Weird Al Yankovic was uh, parodying the song Beat It. He turned it into Eat It. And the answer we wanted was Michael Jackson. Number two. Uh, De Beers, uh, A Diamond Is Forever. Hence the name of the James Bond uh, book and film. Uh, you could have gone for A Diamond is a Girl's Best Friend. That's the only other one that I, I could think of uh, that, that, that could have fitted that. So A Diamond is Forever is what we wanted. Just the word forever will do. Number three. The proboscis monkey has an unusually large reddish brown nose. And shame on you if you wrote anything else. Number four, Ron Wayne sold his 10% stake in Apple in 1976 for $800. He's still with us. He's 84, bless him. And he's, uh, he only kicks himself now five times a day because he's finding it a, a job. You know, it used to be a thousand times a day kicking himself. But he's knocking on now. So he just kicks himself uh, yeah, five times a day. But hindsight is a great thing. I'm sure we'll all agree. Number five, the answer. Originally only available in white, it used to get coal dust off of wallpapers or coal residue. It's Play-Doh. That's what it was originally invented for. 
So, uh, great answer if you said that. Great answer. Could have been a couple of things, I suppose. Now, there was no flies on this chap because he commonly smothered his servants in honey to keep the flies off of him. Honey, the answer to question six. Question seven. Uh, the legendary Benedictine monk was Dom Perignon. Be gentle with the spelling if you're marking someone else's paper. Be, be, be gentle. Just be nice to each other. Be gentle with the spelling. Anything that looks like Perignon will do. As long as it doesn't say Perrier. Perrier. Although I have tasted champagne that tastes like Perrier. Well, that was at my cousin's 21st. We won't go into that. Never let her forget it to this day. Number eight. Where will you find the Sea of Tranquility on the moon? Do you know when it was named? 1651. There were some clever people about throughout history. And in 1651, that had been spotted and named. My word. Number nine is the most expensive spice in the world. Saffron, and it comes from the crocus. The most expensive spice in the world, saffron. But the answer we wanted was crocus. It comes from the crocus flower. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will have got the answer to the last one. The Shape of You, the most streamed track ever on Spotify, was a hit for Mr. Ed Sheeran. How many times has it been streamed? No extra points. Have a quick guess. 2.5 billion times. 2.5 billion. So it's fair to say that he's worth a few quid, old Ed. That's it. That's the end of our uh, third quiz that we brought to you during this this uh, uh, crazy time. Um, we'll be here next week. Don't forget, put your scores, uh, uh, log your scores in, uh, and see how you do against uh, all, all the other teams out there. Uh, again, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're having a lot of fun bringing it to you. Any feedback's welcome. You think it's too hard, too easy? Anything you'd like us to change? Any ideas uh, that you might have for uh, particularly our, our picture rounds? We intend to keep them fun and uh, informative so yeah any feedback at all um thank you again for tuning in uh, i'm sean williamson and god willing i'll see you this time uh, next week next friday at eight o'clock i'll pass you back to jane allen thank you so much sean as sean says yes please put your scores in uh, quest.quizzing.com uh, we'll put some instructions for that up in a second and also yeah please send in your ideas sharon's idea was fantastic thanks ever so much for that sharon um, i've had somebody else send in um, an idea as well so i'm going to go and work that up too for next week so hopefully we will see you next week um, we will also be my sister and i as the quizzer sisters on wednesday at eight o'clock and if you want a quiz that's a bit more taxing Sunday at 8 o'clock we've got a team quiz again free same time same place on Sunday Sean thank you so much what a fantastic host you are thank you Pleasure. thank you everybody to tune it for tuning in and we will hopefully see you again soon thank you bye bye see ya